Welcome to Firebend, Conversational Solfage. I'm James Chow. Now, before we move on, if you have yet to watch the Firebend First Steps in Music presented by Lexi Govan, I'd highly recommend you go back and watch that. The Firebend First Steps in Music sets the foundation for Conversational Solfege to succeed. Now, what is Conversational Solfege? Well, Conversational Solfege is a research-based, literature-driven method where notational literacy develops as children hear and then say or sing to decode music using correct rhythm and solfege syllables before moving on to reading and writing notation. In other words, students learn how to read and write the things they can hear and perform. Some primary sources to use when teaching in this method include patterns, folk songs, rhymes, and classical music. And again, I want to stress that this, is, this method is used for children who have already developed tuneful, beatful, artful skills, which has gone over in the Firebend First Steps in Music video. Why use conversational solfege? It is a developmental approach, not a chronological one. So that the right age to start entirely depends on whether a student is foundationally musical, so that they are ready for more challenging and formal instruction. Again, foundationally musical students are determined by their level of tuneful, beatful, and artfulness. There are 12 steps to utilizing conversational solfege. Step one, readiness. You must first prepare the students for learning by introducing them to the songs and rhymes that contain rhythm and or tonal content, which we studied later. When, when teaching a song, model the entire thing several times, but keep them active by having them do different things with their bodies on each repetition. This will familiarize them with pitches, rhythms, words, and expressions. Step two is where we will now move into conversational solfege. The first part of this, wrote, is to introduce rhythm, syllables, and or tonal syllables uh, to the students. Patterns are spoken or sung by the teacher using syllables, and the students repeat this by rote uh, using those same syllables. During this stage, students bond rhythm and tonal patterns with oral labels. Step three is where we decode using familiar patterns. The teacher speaks or sings familiar patterns, uh, songs or rhymes using neutral syllables, and the students echo them back using rhythm syllables such as lu or la. Step four, decoding the unfamiliar, is the same as step three, except you are using unfamiliar material. Step five, is the most important step within this conversational solfege practice. It is recommended that the majority of lesson time is spent here. Create. This stage develops the ability to think original music thoughts, uh, where students are encouraged to create original rhythm or tonal patterns using rhythm or tonal syllables. It is estimated that you should spend about 70% of your time through this entire process here at step five. Step six is reading. Uh, the first step of that is rote. This is where students are introduced to notation. The teacher reads notated patterns for the students and they repeat each pattern while looking at the written notation. A great tool to use for this step would be flashcards. Step seven, decoding the familiar within reading. Uh, this is similar to step three, where you use conversational solfege and decoding familiar uh, passages. Uh, what you do as the teacher is you help them decode by using familiar songs, patterns, and rhymes, except this time, the teacher will ask the student to observe notated patterns and think through them using rhythm or tonal syllables. The student should then speak or sing them aloud using said rhythm or tonal syllables. Step eight, decode the unfamiliar. It's the same thing as step seven, uh, except you are now using unfamiliar material. 
So again, you ask them to observe the notated patterns and think through them using rhythm and tonal syllables. And then they are to speak or sing them aloud using those same rhythm or tonal syllables. The only difference is you are using familiar songs, rhymes, and patterns here, and you are using unfamiliar songs, rhymes, and patterns here. Uh, and the difference, again, between the conversational solfege and the reading is that conversational solfege, they are listening to you and repeating you after you. Reading, they are looking at written notation and also listening to you and repeating after you. All right. Now that the students have experience with reading notation, we can move on to step nine, writing. Again, we, fo we follow the pattern of starting the students off by learning by rote. They should copy existing patterns, songs, and rhymes, and be instructed uh, to use proper manuscript techniques. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, step 10. I'm sure you're seeing a pattern here. We have them decode the familiar. We have the teacher play a familiar pattern or phrase from a song, and the students will be expected to write the notation down. A great method for this would be to have the students listen, then sing that pattern, uh, and then write it down. They should be familiar with the notation after reading for a while. So this is good practice uh, that is kinesthetic to them. Step 11, decode the unfamiliar. Same as back in reading, same as back during conversational solfege. You are repeating step 10, uh, but using unfamiliar music. This helps to solidify that these students are not just relying on their rote memorization, but that they are actually learning to associate pitches, sounds, and rhythms with what they are seeing here in the notation section. Step 12, which is the final step, uh, requires to conversationally create through inner hearing, which is developed back here in step five, conversational solfege creation. And it's also why we want to spend the most time here during the lesson. Students are instructed to uh, transfer their musical thoughts into notation. So they are expected to think about what they can hear inside their heads and to notate that down on paper. This skill is called composition. Now, some things to keep in mind as you teach through this conversational solfege method. You need to remember, your job is not to sing along and make happy with the students. You are to sing for the class, not with the class. You are providing them with the framework upon which they are building their musical knowledge. You must develop skill with patterns before songs. Patterns are much easier for young students to digest, and those skills can be transferred to playing songs in the future. Develop inner hearing at every single stage. It is vital to have students develop their inner ear as early as possible because it takes a lifetime to perfect. Most learning takes place when a child sings individually by themselves. This means that you will want to instruct your students in such a way that they reflect on what you taught them when it comes time for private practice. In other words, you want to teach your students how to practice uh, while they are in class with you. So that way when they go home, they can continue uh, practicing well. Develop vocal proficiency before instrumental applications at any level. The simplest way to put this would be read it, sing it, play it. I've included here a link. I'll leave it up for a few moments. And I will have included this down below in the notes for the video. If you can click on it, it'll take you to this resource right here, which is a very, very good conversational solfege resource. Developing music literacy using conversational solfege. This resource includes what we just went over, the 12 steps of conversational solfege, readiness, 
by rote, conversational solfege, uh, reading, and writing. And also the five things to remember while going through it. Down below, you'll see several rhythm patterns as well as familiar tunes to teach the students. And not only that, but down below on some of the pages, they even talk about how one can go about teaching these, these as lessons. I think this is a fantastic resource to use. For example, here, hand pattern number one, the ham bone, we've got the rhythm one, two, and, one, and, two, and. Here, we break it down to the very first step. You can have the students say, do, do, de, do, de, do, de. So you can go, do, do, de, do, de, do, de. And then to add a kinesthetic um, method to this, you can use your right hand, slap the side of your thigh, then that'll be the first uh, beat. Then for the next beat, you want to use your right hand again, slap the thigh, and then move on to tap the chest. And then thigh, chest, thigh, chest, and just the motion of that, and you have them repeat this and you break it down for them. And I think this is just a fantastic resource. And it just, it just keeps going. There's so much good stuff here. Highly recommend that you check it out. But that, I hope that uh, you were able to take away something from this. Uh, that is conversational solfege. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. Until next time.